Welcome back to Abstract, I'm Ali Ray. Dean Davis is an airbrush artist who took his work to new heights as part of the artist team behind the Glass City River Wall Mural, a project equally as challenging as it is rewarding. Not a normal mural, it is a very large mural, you know? And a lot of us, I mean, heck, I've never, before that I wasn't over 60 foot. And then all of a sudden it's just like, well, let's go up to 135, you know, and, and test that theory and see if you can, and can deal with that. That was the, probably the most exhausting feeling is after five or six months, knowing that you're going up on that lift and you're like, man, I need a break. With the silo project, you know, I was completely in the dark about the entire silo project. I had no idea that we had any idea of what was going on, nothing, nothing at all. It was completely behind me. I walked away um, uh, from a news channel. I watched the news clip of it and I was angry, just like a lot of the artists in Toledo. Like we couldn't understand why this wasn't given to Toledo, why you know they had to network this thing. Um, we, we had everything in house for this to happen. Toledo might feel big, but you can reach the end of it pretty quickly. Like it's, it's the kind of city where, yeah, we have like 300,000 people in like Toledo proper, but yeah, you can reach the top of a lot of things pretty quickly. So it's a fairly small, fairly cloistered art scene here, which is fine, right? It works for what we have. I mean, this is a very art heavy city. You can't, you know, walk 10 feet downtown without falling face first into a mural. So I think that might've been the initial apprehension. Like we have so many people here already. Why uh, are we looking elsewhere? Before any paint touched the silos, a call to action was put out for the design, one which wasn't answered by local artists, but by Los Angeles-based muralist Gabe Galt. I think it was irrelevant where they were. It was more along the lines of who submitted and who was in line with this stuff. Gabe was really the only one who truly understood what like the Midwest meant and what a grain silo in the Midwest would mean. I felt the same way, you know? And I think when I, when I came on the project, I also thought, you know, we probably need to involve the east side more. Dean Davis is a, a Toledo, and Dean Davis grew up on the east side, so he's even an east sider at heart. The thought that I had then was to reach out to Gabe, um, who was the artist that was selected for this, and, and let him know that I was interested in simply helping, that I wanted to be part of it, that I, I, I seen the beauty, but I also welcomed him to Toledo because it was something that needed to be done. There was the last thing people want with these kind of ventures is animosity. You don't want to bring some sort of anger or some hostility to the situation. So let's make it embrace them. Dino, who came out and just reached out to me and wanted to, wanted to be a part of this whole thing. And that's just been like a whole different experience on another level of just like coming together and working and getting this thing done. Um, and it's just been all positive all positive. I'm gonna do my part where I can, but you know, I'll leave that to the professionals over here. Uh, this guy's a beast right here, Dino. So yeah, that's what he does best. I'll stick to the ground and just kind of work it from here. It's been nothing but opportunity. You know, I was hired on as simply just an artist and, and help out with the project. And I became, you know, a pretty pinnacle part in the whole process after that. Uh, it really hasn't set in, but I, I think that ignorance is bliss to kind of go up there with it um, at the same time. Um, I think that uh, when it's all said and done, to be part of something, you, whether someone you know, supersedes it later on in life, but to know that th at one point this was the largest mural, um, kind of like definitely in this area in the world or you know, in the nation by itself is, is pretty remarkable. I mean, we might be airlifted off. I'm wearing Depends. I mean, I am kind of, you know, wearing some safety harness underneath. <laughs> the biggest accomplishment is, is getting to the top of the mirror, the top of the silo first. That was huge for me. You know, I, I put my initials up at the top there right off the bat. And, you know, to take ownership of that fear and see all the beautiful opportunities that came behind it. I knew that that was the, the, a hurdle. I knew that that was like a huge wall that I had to accomplish to even move forward on the silo project. I had to conquer that fear. Another huge moment is, is watching everyone work together um, and, and getting the team to actually function as a whole. We've got like a really great team of artists, so I don't think there'll be any issues 
you know, completing it and making it look just as good. By the end of this, it'll all look like it's done by, you know, one. We all came together and kind of contributed our little touches. It takes a special kind of person to dedicate their days tied to a lift, splashing blue paint after blue paint after blue paint across a monstrous concrete canvas. I would have been up in, uh, in a monsoon to get that last bit in up there. I was, I was so, I, I, there's not a piece of article of clothing I don't have that, that doesn't have that on. My wife is completely exhausted with seeing any of this blue. And it, um, you know, I had it in my beard at one time that I couldn't get it out. Um, so um, I'm sure that it's going to be reintroduced to uh, my therapist later on in sessions on why I stay away from blue paint or blue dye of any sort. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. You're talking to a painter who is in the zone and focused and possibly zoning themselves out because of how high they have to go. Focus is. It wouldn't matter if we were five times that height. You know, artists just have that focus that you can't break them from it. Originally scheduled for completion in August of 2021, the mural hit snags along the way, from weather to lack of pain to funding to outright exhaustion. And eventually production was halted until spring of 2022. I'm grateful that we did take a break because I mean, I was pretty taxed. Um, at that point, without a doubt. Um, and, you know, fresh set of eyes. It's, it's where it's at. I mean, you, you gotta have a fresh set of eyes going into the battle. We were gonna have to come back to spring anyways, just because we had to see what this elements threw at the wall. I mean, you, you get a season of, of cold weather, of rain, of snow, um, and then you look at what the paint's doing at that point. To me, it's a, it's a memory now, you know, like it's, it's truly a mile marker in my life. I quit my job, you know, um, I dedicated myself to it. You know, it was a plateau of, of a certain sense when it got put on pause. But you know, this project will be done soon. I, I'm aware of that and my life will go on after this. And you know, the direction it's going, it's, it's truly like an arrow being released because there's nothing, like the, the world just keeps on just granting these massive, massive opportunities at me. And I, I can't be grateful enough. I mean, as long as I stay positive and see them for what they're worth, I think that it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm retired already, you know, if you think about it. <laughs>